Peace, peace. Shalom, um, Israel. First off, I want to say, Kahalal, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. Uh, just back in the spirit with another lesson. Uh, I know we're in a land to where pretty much uh, what's good is called evil and what's evil is called good. The scriptures talk about the turning of things upside down. So we're in a uh, rulership that's under the complete influence of the spiritual demon Satan, which we know the physical counterpart to the spiritual demon Satan is the nation of Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed white people that are set up as rulers today. And I'm really talking about the higher up, the elite that really uh, are into the spirit of uh, putting enchantments on, to have control of the minds of the people. But in the midst of everything that's going on, the prophets know what time it is, man. We've been given our wake-up call through the spirits. Like it says in Amos, the third chapter, uh, the Most High, he revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So pretty much everybody's kept in the dark. But we've been illuminated because I know a lot of people – they, uh, they're into so-called conspiracy theories and knowing about the Illuminati, which that word Illuminati, it just means enlightened or enlightened ones. And the true enlightened ones are the elect of the nation of Israel, those men that will be set up to receive this truth and be about the confession of Yahweh Shah, pushing these prophecies as we see more things manifest as the Most High ordained in his will according to prophecy. So I'll probably end up titling this lesson something to the effect of we're the light of the world, man, because it's a dark place. The scriptures talk about in Psalms 23 in the valley of the shadow of death in a valley is a low land. This is a low level place, man. That's why, brothers, we should constantly be in the spirit of praying and pleading with our power, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, to get us the hell up out of here, man, because it's going to get worse and worse. That's why the Most High, he's going to have to shorten the days for the elect's sake, but even right now, Esau, Edom, the, the elites, the powers to be that control everything, they're framing, they're trying to frame their narrative to really address the men of the Lord. But it's not going to work. Even though, brothers, we're going to go through uh, adversity, certain levels of comfort are going to be taken away. But ultimately, if we're the most high as elect, man, we're going to prevail. We're going to complete our course. But I'm going to start off here in Matthew, the fifth chapter, in the tenth verse, uh, St. Matthew uh, 5 and 10. It says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So there's going to be a lot of persecution. Right now, it's mostly verbal. Guys on these comment boards making videos, coming up against the men of the Lord. But pretty soon, it's going to be on a physical level to where people are going to really be trying to be cause physical harm to the prophets. But that's a blessing, though, because that's an indication that you may just be a man of the Lord. That's a key identifier of a man of the Lord, because these false prophets, they're not being persecuted. They're loved by everybody. They're greatly esteemed in this society. Verse 11, it says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So there's going to be... Uh, a lot of uh, slander and, and false narratives portrayed to try to discredit the men of the Lord, to try to make us look like we're crazy as hell, which the scriptures do say that uh, we're fools for Yahweh Shahamashiach's sake. So we understand uh, the foolishness of preaching, but this is what pleases the Most High. It does look, it does appear foolish. People say that we out there uh, with dresses on, which we know that these are just replicas of our ancient garments. But to the majority of these people, we appear foolish, man. It appears that we're angry, disgruntled, uh, so-called Negroes, man, on the street corners. So a lot of false narratives and false witnesses are going to rise up against the men of the Lord. Verse 12, it says, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So we're supposed to rejoice when we have to go through persecution, especially if we're suffering as an anointed one, as a so-called Christian. It says, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. 
And like it says in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, the most high is not unrighteous to forget our work and our labor of love. So this is a labor of love and uh, brothers making their bodies a living sacrifice to go out on the highways and the byways to push this truth, to put up these videos, to basically push a very unpopular message in a, a world that can't receive it, man, in a wicked world to where everyone is under the spell and enchantment of Satan. It says, for so, this is the second part of verse 12, it says, for so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. And the scripture says in Romans 15 and 4, the things which were written aforetime were written for our learning. So if they, if they persecuted the prophets before us and our greatest example to date, Yahweh Shah, we know that we're going to be uh, persecuted. Because the servant is not greater than the master. All right? The next verse, verse 13, it says, Ye are the salt of the earth. And we know that salt brings that seasoning because all through the spirit of prophecy, ain't nobody sprinkling the season that the prophets is sprinkling on these people, man. We're, we've changed the whole trajectory of how platforms bring out information on YouTube, namely, man. Even though a lot of people may not have necessarily the, the full truth, they bringing out all types of information, man, to condemn this damn devil and all of these uh, wicked agendas that this devil is trying to force on the masses of these people, man. But it all starts with that vibration of the prophets uh, speaking these prophecies, teaching this truth, man, being the real seasoning in the earth, man. This truth is that, tr that, that real seasoning for the earth, man, that flavor, that flavor in your ear. Shout out to Craig Mack, you know. <laughs> Uh, it says, verse 13, it says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherein shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. So we have to constantly pray that the Most High doesn't take that spirit off of us, that salt off of us, man. That we'll stay in our lot and endure until the end as the prophets, man. Verse 14, it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So the scripture says right here, and it's talking about the disciples at that time, which we are followers of Yahweh Shah. Disciple is a follower. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahweh Shah Mashiach, like it says in Philippians 2. So the scripture says, We are the light in this world, but only if we speak according to the word, like it says in Isaiah 8 and 20. If they don't speak according to the word, there's no light in them. So a lot of people uh, that have platforms to speak, a lot of them, they really don't even need to be speaking because they're not speaking according to the word. So really their speech is, is, is filled with darkness. There's no light in their speech. But the scripture says we are the light of the world, man. It says neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, and it give it light unto all that are in the house. And we're basically holding out the candlestick, which is this truth, the light. We're proclaiming the light, man. And just through what seems as an insignificant task of, of us pushing this word out there on the highways and byways, a lot of people are coming to the light. The fruit, the elect, they're coming to the light. They're waking up out of the, the, the darkness, out of that dark state. Because a lot of people proclaim to be woke, but really, they're still uh, groping at, at noonday. They're still uh, asleep. They're still uh, basically struggling to see where they're going in all of this darkness. They don't have the light. Verse 16, it says, uh, let, your light, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So the light that we have, you know, it's not to glorify ourselves, but to glorify Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So the Father is the Father through the Son Yahweh Shah is glorified when a, a, a brother wakes up to the, this truth and comes into the light, and that's a miracle in itself to come to the light when all you see around you is just complete darkness, man, just wickedness, just evil. Everybody's plotting on each other, scheming, committing adultery. Scamming, running games, finessing. That's the type of world that we're we're having to uh uh live in at the time being right now, man. 
If you're in the right mind, you wouldn't want this to continue on. This is Isaiah 60 and 1. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So the glory of the Lord has risen upon us through us receiving this word. Because Yahweh Shai ultimately is the light, and he comes in the volume of the book. So everything that we read, all of the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as it pertains to what's written in the Bible, the prophecies concerning Yahweh Shai, that's the true light, which is also the kingdom of heaven. Because the Yahweh Shah said the kingdom of heaven is within you. A lot of people, they don't have the kingdom of heaven within them because they don't have this light. They don't have this word. They don't have Yahweh Shah. It says, for behold, the, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So it's complete gross darkness amongst this world as we know it, especially here in the Western Hemisphere, in the Northwestern Hemisphere, which is uh, Babylon the Great, America, man. It's just saturated in wickedness, man. Wickedness to no end, man. And people love to have it so. People love to have it so. It seems like the more wicked you are, the more opportunities to prosper that you sometimes get in this kingdom, man. And at the end of the day, everyone despises that light because the light truly reveals what's going on in a room. So that's another reason why we're going to be condemned, why we're going to be persecuted for this word, man. You know, this world as we know it, they hate righteousness, man. That's why a group of women, if there's one woman, you know, who's quiet, She's to herself. She's trying to do right. They all hate on that one woman that's trying to do right. Now, this bitch ain't nothing. This, that, the third, the fourth. They just talk down on her like she's not nothing just because she's trying to be righteous. Oh, look at here. She's trying to be goody two-shoes. And the same thing within the men of the Lord. You know, the scripture says in Isaiah 59 and 14, uh, we're made of prey. Basically, Lucy paraphrasing for, for standing up uh, against wickedness. And that's ultimately because people despise righteousness. They despise the light. This is St. John 3 and 19. It says, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light. So the light that came into this world that most people couldn't receive was Yahweh Shah. But men love darkness rather than light. We're the light of the world right now, man, on the scene preaching the message and the testimony of Yahweh Shah. But men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And that starts first and foremost with two-thirds of you Israelites, man. Our own people love darkness rather than light because they want to continue in those wicked, evil deeds. They want to continue eating uh, pork and, and shrimp and, and crawfish and lobster, sleeping with another man's woman, stealing, robbing, selling drugs, using drugs. Our people don't want to uh, uh, repent and put away their evil deeds. And I'm talking about our people first and foremost, but how much more so the heathen nations that are within uh, Great Babylon, man. Everyone is just engulfed in, 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 in doing evil, worshiping them, themselves, a high spirit of idolatry, worshiping celebrities and entertainers and athletes and shit like that. This place has to go down. Even like a surgeon or someone who saves somebody's life, he don't get the, the notoriety that a so-called celebrity would get, man. It's really shameful, man, that it's stooped to this low of a level. But it's all for the, the, the will of the Lord to have to play out. Ultimately, man, verse 20, it says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So everyone that's doing wickedness, they hate light. They hate when someone says, hey, man, you ain't supposed to be sleeping with another man's woman. Hey, there's a dietary law. If you proclaim to be an Israelite that believe in the Bible, in Leviticus, there's a dietary law. You, you can't eat, you know, pork and shellfish. Hey, you know, you're not supposed to be living, dealing with your woman when she's on her menstrual cycle. You know, I can go on and go on, but I'm just giving examples, man, of how... Whenever light is brought into the equation, people hate being corrected, especially women, man. 
and women are 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 very uh inaccountable if that's even a word but women they don't like to be held accountable rather for any of their actions man they always try to go to victim mode deflection gaslighting but pretty much everyone is in that spirit of women no one wants to be uh, held accountable for what they do even men who proclaim to be Israelites. But that's why Yahweh Shah said there's not going to be any coke for our people's sins because the light of the world has been introduced, man. That light, the prophets are on the scene to where this word has been spread throughout the four corners of the earth. So nobody's going to have any excuse for their sins. The Most High is going to be completely justified in sending his son, Yahweh Shah, to wreak havoc on this place. Verse 21, it says, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in the most high so when you come into this truth you're coming into the light and you're going to have to correct your deeds you're going to have to repent you're going to have to ask the most high to forgive you and you're going to have to change your course of of action now that's not to say that brothers that are in this light that are in this truth that we don't still sin the righteous man falleth and get it and pick it himself back up. But we have to have the sincere spirit to repent and, 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 and be in the spirit to offend less. So with all being said, man, it's a disgusting cesspool of a place that we have to just walk around in. It's just complete gross darkness on every side. But the hope for the elect is we got the light. We can at least see our way and navigate our, our way around in this land of darkness, man. So... Lord willing, we endure to the end. So with all being said, I'll just end out with that. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakaqa, Dash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.